Shalom Forana family, friends, and everyone tuning in. A warm welcome to Forana Fellowship Online. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ from my home to yours. And this weekend, Singapore is celebrating her 55th birthday. Happy National Day, Singapore. Brothers and sisters, shall we all pray for Singapore? All believers, let us lift up our hands wherever we are to pray for our beloved country, the place that we have called home, this beautiful, beautiful Singapore. Lord, we trust in your sovereignty and power over Singapore. Father, we uphold the government of this nation. Grant them wisdom and bless their work for Singapore. We pray for the frontline workers in this crisis. Let them be strengthened physically, mentally, spiritually as they labor on in their different capacities. Lord, we pray for the people, all of us here in Singapore. We speak your peace that transcends all understanding upon all of us today and especially through this pandemic. We pray for all believers in this nation to continue to be the light in darkness so that more will come to know you. We lift up our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. This week, we at Farana Foundation are so pleased to have Pastor Harun Lee of Bethany Church, Singapore, a loving father of two beautiful girls, to share with us all. So let us prepare our hearts and listen to the Word of God. Greeting to you. My name is Harun. Thank you so much for the opportunity for me to be able to share the Word of God. Uh, the title of the message is From Hosea to Joshua. I remember the story when uh, the people of Israel are going to enter the promised land. And then uh, God asked Moses to choose 12 spies uh, for them to enter the promised land to see how is the situation in the promised land, to see what kind of enemy they are going to face, something like that. Now, so if we read from the Bible, from Numbers 13, uh, verse 1 to 16, uh, first one it was says, the Lord said to Moses, and uh, verse number two, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From its ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. Uh, verse 3, it was says, So at the Lord's command, Moses sent them out to the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. Now, so when God asked Moses to select 12 people, Moses will have to choose the best people uh, that is available to become the spies to enter the promised land. According to Numbers 26 verse 51, uh, it was recorded that during that time, uh, the people of Israel, before they entered the promised land, they had 601,730 adult Man. So they are ready to fight, they are ready to enter the promised land. If you include the number of women and the children, it's actually the total of the population of the people of Israel who are ready to enter the promised land is about 2.5 million people. And then out of 2.5 million people, God asked Moses to choose 12 of them just for them to enter the promised land before the whole uh, people, 2.5 million, going to enter the promised land. Of course, if you imagine, like, they have like more than 600,000 people, men, very capable. They are ready to enter the promised land. And then God asked Moses to choose 12 of them as the spies. Of course, Moses will not just anyhow pick any num uh, any anybody, but of course, Moses will do some selection process uh, of Moses will have to find the best people uh, to represent the whole congregation to become the spies to enter the promised land. Uh, maybe Moses will have to choose uh, someone who is very good in strategy. Uh, Moses have to choose someone who is very smart, very capable, and maybe uh, people who are ready to fight. And also maybe Moses have to find someone who is very good in physical condition. Yeah, so it's not just to pick anybody anyhow, but have to be go through the selection process. Now, first four uh, to the first fifteen, uh, they give the list of the name who are entered to the promised land as the spies. Now, uh, first four, 
These are their names from the tribe of Ruben, Sapua, son of Sakur. From the tribe of Simeon, Sapat, son of Hori. From the tribe of Judah, Caleb, son of Jehune. From the tribe of Issachar, Igal, son of Joseph. Uh, first eight, uh, please notice on this verse. From the tribe of Ephraim, Hosea, son of Nun. Uh, first night from the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, son of Rabu. Uh, from the tribe of Sebulun, Gadiel, son of Sodi. From the tribe of Manasseh, a tribe of Joseph, Gadi, son of Susi. From the tribe of Dan, Amiel, son of Gemali. From the tribe of Asher, Setur, son of Michael. From the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, son of Fopsi. From the tribe of Gad, Geuel, son of Maki. Uh, verse 16, it was said that these are the name uh, of the man Moses sent to explore uh, the land. And then it was also written, Moses gave Hosea, son of Nun, the name of Joshua. So out of the 12 names that were selected, somehow Moses changed one of the names from Hosea into Joshua. Why Moses purposely changed the name Hosea to Joshua? Yeah. The meaning of Hosea is a deliverer, someone who can set them free. And then the name of Joshua is actually God is our deliverer. Yeah. So the, the meaning of Hosea is deliverer, yeah. someone who can set them free. Now, but the name of Joshua, it says God is deliverer. So God is the one who is able to set them free. Now, before the people of Israel entered the promised land, uh, actually the people of Israel were under the slavery of the Egyptian for about 400 years. Yeah, under the slavery of the Egyptian, they forced the people of the Israelites uh, to build the city. Uh, of course, they are very strictly limited their freedom to worship God. So they are under pressure, under the slavery. Maybe some of the people, yeah, after four four hundred years of the slavery, they are longing, longing someone who can deliver them from this slavery. Now they are waiting for someone who can set them free. Now, maybe like the parents of Hosea, when the baby was born, and then the parents of Hosea named him Hosea, which is desire, salvation, uh, which is they were longing someone to set them free. Yeah. So because of the name, and so people are actually reflecting the desire for them to be set free. But Moses changed the name of Hosea to Joshua. So that maybe Moses want to remind Hosea, Hosea, I know you are very capable. I know you are uh, very good. You are very strong. You are maybe very smart. But remember this thing, which is God is the deliverer. So it's not according to our ability, but because God uh, is the one who will set us free in every part of our life. I want also to share the word of God uh, from uh, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. Verse 23, it was written, This is what the Lord says, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, or the strong man boast in his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. Verse 24, But let him who boasts, boast about this, that he understand and know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, righteousness on earth, for in this I delight, declares the Lord. I want to repeat again verse number 23. It was written like this. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, or the strong man boast in his strength and or the rich man was in his riches. Yeah. Now, uh, there are some repetitive words here in this verse, which is the word of boss. Now, the original language in Hebrew, boss is mean halal. Halal is, it means to shine on himself. It means that someone who depends on their own ability uh, and their own strength as if they do not need God. Now, if we want to depend uh, 
on on our life on something let us not depend on these things uh, like in our own wisdom in our own strength or maybe in whatever that we possess but if we want to depend some on something in our life we need to depend on God let us not depend on our own ability but let us continue to depend on God number one is about wisdom Uh, wisdom is here is mean like the, our human knowledge, our understanding, or maybe our experience. First um, 23, it was said that this is what the Lord says: Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Uh, the Bible says that let us not depending on our own understanding, on our own knowledge, and let us not depending maybe on our own experience. Maybe something that we uh, do it for many years, and then suddenly we lose our dependency on God. And the Proverb chapter three, verse seven, it was says, "Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil." I remember. Before I went to Singapore, I was studying uh, school of ministry for three years in Brisbane, and then I went to Singapore. I worked in a company. I joined uh, one of the church in Singapore, and also I, I also helped in the ministry uh, at the church. I was becoming one of the usher, uh, and then somehow I was, you know, pastor. Know that I finished. I graduated from three years of uh, school of ministry. It's like something a Bible college, and then our pastor. Came to me, and then he said, "I know you have finished your graduated uh, bachelor degree in the school of ministry. Uh, uh, at our church, we haven't done a training course to prepare the people to inform in the ministry, and also we also want those who are involved in the ministry also to be trained. Also, why don't you start a training uh, course for our church?" So I was quite shocked and I was quite surprised. Also, I was really under pressure because I'm very new at the church, and then suddenly I have to teach them who are actually more experienced, has been in the ministry for quite some time at the church. So I have no choice. Then I started the class. I thought it's only about 10 people, 15 people, or maybe maximum 20 people. But I was quite shocked because the first class that we have. Uh, it's about 200 people. So every the class is actually on Sunday after the service. Uh, every Saturday evening, I was crying out to God, God, please help me. God, please help me. Please help me, Lord. Please help me. I even pray to God, God, please don't let them ask me some question. Don't ask. Don't let them ask me some question. It's something like that because I was really under pressure. Yeah. So this is maybe happened like almost twenty years ago. So now from there, like twenty twenty years ago up to now, I'm still teaching the same class. Yeah. I'm still teaching using the same material also. So I've been doing this course for many years, and I know the material well. I know how to share. I know how to teach that that kind of. Material. But somehow, like a few years ago, I was quite conflicted because somehow I was reminded when I started the class, where I really every Saturday night I was crying out to God, and now suddenly maybe after I have. Uh, the experience, I know the material very well. Then maybe somehow I feel that maybe I'm not that really dependent on God uh, as when I started uh, the course. So I was quite conflicted. So and and then I realized uh, even though I have the experience, even though I know the material very well, but my dependency on God have to be the same. So I come to God, God, please forgive me if maybe I. Feel I felt that I know the material. I felt that I I I know how to teach them well. But I really uh, ask God forgiveness. God, please forgive me. I if I somehow become dependent on my experience or maybe on on the knowledge that I have about this class. So I now uh, I was reminded every time I started the class, I had to be reminded myself. Continue to depend on God. Continue to depend on God. Continue to ask God to give me the wisdom, the understanding, the anointing for me, so that Your name be glorified. So number one, let us not boast uh, on our own wisdom, but let us continue to depend on God. And number two, uh, it was said again. This is what the Lord says: Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, or the strong. Man 
boss in his strength. Nah, the strength in here is mean power. It's mean our position. Maybe you have a good position like in the company or maybe in the society or maybe you have a good position, maybe something that maybe you can really depend on. But the Bible said, let us not depend on our strength, on our position, on our power. Uh, I remember my friend uh, a few years ago. He's, he's working in the uh, big multinational company. Uh, he's doing IT. He's actually this is happened like a few years ago. And then uh, sometimes I talk to him, and then we met up each other. Uh, he said to me that, oh yeah, yeah, even my boss really trusts me very well, so I I can work from home, so I don't have to come to the office. Uh, this is happened a few years ago. Where uh, work from home is not a norm, so only maybe a selected people can work from home during that time. So this friend of mine is able to work from home because you know he's very trustable, and then the company really need him. So he's enjoying his life, uh, working from home <laughs> to be with the family also. Now and then uh, one day when I have a chat with him, so he came to me and then he said, "Oh yeah, tomorrow I'm going to." write a letter to my boss and then I, I, I asked him what kind of letter he said yeah I want to ask for my boss to raise my salary yeah so I actually try to you know talk to him you know I said to him I mean we believe that God is our provider and also God also can you know with this way God can speak to your boss uh, so that you can get the raise you know maybe uh, it doesn't mean that you have to ask. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's my belief. I said. Yeah, and then but he said that no, 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 no. The company need me. I I have a good position in the in the company. So I think I should have a uh, increment in the in, in, in the salary. Yeah. So okay, it's up to you. So he actually uh, wrote a letter and then he passed on to the boss the next day and then when he passed on to the boss the boss say oh yeah 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 of course of course sure 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 no problem no problem let me have this uh, discussion with with other board yeah and then he left the office the next day the next day he was called to the to the office again and then the boss passed him a letter but it's not not a letter of the increment but actually a letter of termination yeah so actually instead of uh, having a salary being uh, Chris is actually uh, being terminated of his employment, so he has no job. Yeah? So he came to me, you know, he complained about it and things like that. He, he said he never thought that the company will terminate his employment. Yeah, he never thought of it. Yeah? Now, so he ended up trying to find a new job also. He couldn't get a new job in Singapore and then he decided to went back to uh, back home to Indonesia. Yeah. Now, so I think maybe this is one of the example uh, for us. We cannot really depend on our position. We cannot really depend on you know our our our, our position in the society also. Especially for example during uh, this situation where people, many people are actually maybe being with friends or maybe uh, cannot have any job anymore. Yeah. We cannot depend on our position in any way. But we have to really depend on God in our life. So number one, let us not depend on our wisdom. And number two, let us not depend on our strength, on maybe our power. And number three, let us not depend on our riches, on what we have, on what we possess. Verse 23 again, it was says like this. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, or the strong man boast in his strength, or the rich man boast in his riches. So let us not depend on what we have, but we have to depend on God, the source of everything. All the things that we have is actually come from God. Yeah? Now, I want to read from Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. It was written like this. But remember the Lord your God. Yeah? We have to remember our God. For it is He who give you the ability to produce well. In what we have right now, it is actually is from God. I remember a few years ago, uh, there's one big company in Singapore, and then uh, suddenly the, the building was on fire. 
Uh, so I remember I was watching the news, and then the firefighter came to the side and tried to put off the uh, the fire. And then suddenly, after a while, the firefighting tried to put the fire. Suddenly, there was a heavy rain uh, in that area also. Then the heavy rain actually caused a flood uh, in that building. Uh, so in one day, this building was on fire. And after that, this building, the same building, was being flooded. Uh, now, and then I was on, I was on TV also. The the owner of the business was interviewed by the reporter, and then the business owner mentioned to the reporter, uh, you know, we've been building this business for you know almost forty years, and then suddenly everything is gone uh, in one day. That's what he said. Yeah, I think is uh, this story reminded. That God is the source of everything, including on what we have. God can give to us, and also God can take it away from our life. So let us not depend on what we have, on our riches, or maybe with our on our position. But our dependency is only through God. Yeah, and we believe that God is our provider. It's not according to what we have, but because because according. To the nature of God, He's a loving God, He's a, a caring God, and He's the God who is able to provide everything in our life. And then we should depend on God as our provider. So what we learn today, we cannot depend on our wisdom, we cannot depend on our strength, we cannot depend on our richness, but we can only depend on God. I will continue with the first twenty-four. But let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, righteousness on earth. For in this thing I delight, declares the Lord. Now there are two words in here, which is understand and know. Huh? Now the word understand is actually using the word hear. Saman, saman means we understand, we hear about God. We know someone actually mentioned to us about God. Maybe someone who give the testimony to us on the goodness of God. Then uh, all the information uh, build the trust in our life about God. Now, not only for us to hear the word knows is using the word yada, which is to know by experience. So our life is not only hear from other people, the testimony of, uh, of, of other people to us, but also we can experience ourselves that God is Almighty God. God provided for us. God helped us maybe in the past. Maybe God helped us in the family. Maybe God helped us uh, in our business, in our relationship. This is uh, the understanding that we have in our life that build our hope also in God. Let us continue to pursue God for us to understand Him and also for us to know Him, to know the personality of God, the character of God, and what we know we can experience in our life. In that, if, if, if it's happened in our life, we will not depend our, on our human ability, but we will continue to depend on God every day of our life. Let us pray together. We just want to say thank you, Lord, for today that we are able to hear what you have been uh, shared to us, Lord. Let us continue uh, not to depend on other things, but only depend on you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for uh, today uh, that you continue to strengthen us, Lord, continue to depend on you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.